I stand before you, a former soldier and concerned citizen. Since turning over responsibility for the protection of the people of Ashraf to the government of Iraq in January of 2009, I have not had a restful night of sleep, as have the residents of Ashraf and Liberty. For I was the commander of that joint interagency task force that actually did turn them over to the Iraqi government after those assurances that they would, the people of Ashraf would be protected. سرهنگ مکلاسکی در موارد متعدد در مقابل نیرنگ های دیکتاتوری آخوندی و دعاوی مزدوران وزارت اطلاعات علیه مجاهدین به روشنگری پرداخت. در همین رابطه سرهنگ مکلاسکی در مقاله‌ای که در سایت خبری تانحال در مهر ماه 1394 در شد مزور مصطفی محمدی را افشا کرد When I lived in Ashraf uh, I was adjacent to the city of Ashraf and I frequently toured the city and spoke with the residents and visiting families I still have my notes about the, the children and the families of how they felt about their relatives over the, uh, in Ashraf in the torture that their families had endured because of their family members. Everybody I spoke to in Ashraf said they were there because they wanted to be there. I've had family members come to the gates and say, my child is being held against her will, Mustafa. And he stayed at that gate day after day. And every time I would go in and I would talk to her, you sure you want to stay here? And she would say, yes. People of Ashraf did surrender and got protected person status. And they continued to live the same way they had lived. They had military uniform. To me, their lifestyle, their regimentation, uh, was the only way they could survive. Can you imagine being held uh, or being in a camp 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with an Iraqi army outside, Iraqi police ready to arrest you, the Quds Force dropping rockets in on us on a regular basis. You had to have some regimentation in order, in order for that group to survive. They're heroes, and they should be heroes to all of you. Anybody a paramilitary base to me is very incendiary and it demonstrates an insensitivity to the plight of the residents of Ashraf. سرهنگ مکلاسکی همچنین در کارزار افشای توطئه رژیم علیه مجاهدین که تحت عنوان کودک سربازی توسط یک خبرنگار مزدور وزارت اطلاعات در نشریه دی سایت آلمان صورت گرفت با ارائه دو استشهاد به دادگاه دعاوی کذب خبرنگار مزبور را افشا کرد سرهنگ مکلاسکی حتی در مورد رفتاری که در دوران فشار و محاصره حتی با کسانی که برای رفتن به دنبال زندگی خود اشرف را ترک کرده بودند نیز افشاگری میکرد و از جمله گفته بود by the leadership and by the residents of Ashraf. They came to us with full faith that we would get them ref refugee status and then they would go on with their life in other countries in Europe. The UN came in and they vetted these people. They listened to their stories. They learned what countries they wanted to go to. And we put them in a camp with the intent that This would serve as an example if we could relocate these people to other places around the world. Well, I can tell you one thing. Those poor people sat for four years with a lot of promises from the Red Cross, from the UN, 
all the other agencies. And I sat and I watched European Union people come in, everybody promising to help and take the refugees from Ashraf. I want to tell you that nobody voluntarily took the residents of, of Ashraf refugee camp. It got so bad that the refugees in the camp wanted to be let free. They had earned money while working in our camp, and they had sufficient funds to be released. I finally convinced our leadership to let them go. And we gradually started off with very small groups of them, and we would open up the gates, they would take their personal belongings, and they would leave the camp. Many made their way into Turkey, and several of them died trying to make their way to freedom. We then decided to build a special refugee camp up in uh, De Hook in Kurdistan. The Kurdish government worked with us and the UN worked with us and we thought it was a great idea to do that. And so we moved them up to De Hook. And those people sat in hotels. And before we could get them settled into the new refugee camp which we were going to build, the government of Erbil came and they took them away with the blessing of the UN. And without our ability to really control the situation, they moved them into apartments in Erbil. I do not know the fate of those people to this day. But I do know, and what I did, what I did here, was that the Quds Force wanted to have control. Sarhang Makkilaski در جریان گرد همایی کهکشان در سال 1398 که در اشرف سه برگزار شد، فرصت یافت با بسیاری از مجاهدینی که با آنها رابطه عمیق و دوستانه ای در عراق داشت، دیدار و گفتگو کنند. They have stood as a beacon of light. wherever they go for the people of Iran. And people that are living in Iran now should know that they're always going to be around, they're always going to be there thinking of the day that they can return to their great country. Uh, I will never forget the people I met there and the many people I've met around the country uh, who support this organization. خانم مریم رجوی در گذشت سرهنگ مکلاسکی را به بستگانش و به شخصیتهای آمریکایی مدافع حقوق اشرفی ها تسلیت گفت و تاکید کرد مردم و مقاومت ایران یاد او را که به ندای وجدانی انسانی خود پاسخ گفت و از حقیقت و حقوق مجاهدان اشرفی در برابر توته های فاشیسم دینی حاکم بر ایران دفاع کرد فراموش نخواهند کرد 